the audience to actually try to gather closer here because we're going to do something together. Um, we've, we've gathered some polarizing statements, but by that I mean statements that would make uh, you either say, yes, this, I completely agree with what, what you just said, and I stand right here. Or, uh, or you, would, you would say, no fucking way, this is definitely, like, this is so wrong that, that I can't even believe that you even mention, like, dare say something like that. Or you can say, like, yeah, it's not exactly that, you know, the, the, it could go that way or that way, what did you exactly mean by this word and so on. So, um, we are basically going to visualize uh, the debate by, um, by presenting our positions visually uh, and spatially. So, uh, yeah, it's a diverging, it's a diverging uh, graph, and and I, I would, you might also notice that we have the signs over here, and over here, and over here. That's for you. So you are welcome to join us, and it, you you don't have to do it, um, but you are very welcome to to come and try to say, yeah, I'm kind of uh, over here or over here, and I would definitely interview you and ask you what makes you stand here, what makes you stand over there, and then when I'm interviewing um, um, one of you, the idea is you don't only need to say why you stand over there, you also need to say why everybody needs to stand over there. And that is where, when, when, uh, when Peter is saying something very, very convincing about, about why this statement is really bullshit. I, I actually think that, yeah, I shouldn't really stand over here because that's kind of the, kind of, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stand over here. <laughs> so, uh, do, do, doing that gesture of walking towards Peter, that would be uh, a way of acknowledging what he's saying and, and a way of acknowledging that you are an open-minded person that changes their uh, opinion based on new data, right? Or new argument. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, any questions about how this is going to work? Does that make sense? So, yeah, the, the background for this is really um, panels need, uh, uh, tend to be very boring when people just uh, say, oh, I completely agree with what uh, my friend just said and let me reiterate his message. We don't want you to reiterate your message. We want you to trash talk the other side. Um, so that's where we're, sh we're going with this thing. So, um, let's go with the first one. And the first polarizing statement um, is based on Julio's talk. And um, it goes like this. The general public is not interested in going beyond fetish infographics. The general public is not interested in going beyond <laughs> fetish <laughs> infographics. <laughs> so, uh, just to remind you, uh, yesterday uh, Julia was arguing that we must go beyond fetish infographics. Um, but, yeah. Okay. Okay. Fast food. So that's why I agree. Um, anybody else? People are lazy. <laughs> Barbara is going, is standing all the way there. Does, it, does that mean she, she thinks that that is the, the whole truth that came? Like this is the most true thing ever happened? No. Okay. Um, okay, Julio, as, a, as the one holding the torch for going beyond. Uh, do you want, you want to know? So that's just what I, I want to say, that you want to know. So the public want to know, and uh, that, that's a very simple reason, and it's most of it. The pleasure is in knowing, not, you know, not waiting to know. Now, if, if, if one of the speakers is saying something that actually makes you think that they are even less right, you can actually walk even backwards from it. Um, so so that, 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 that is all, also a way of uh, uh, positioning yourself. Enrico, come to me. 
No, 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 no. It's only one microphone, and, and nobody touches the microphone. It's only in my hand. So the, the, the counter argument I have is, is about executive capacity. Um, and it's, I don't disagree that it would be great if the public wanted more, but you know, data porn, or whatever you want to call it, doesn't impose on people's executive capacity. It's like, here, spoon feeding, this is what you should think. And people love that because that means they don't need to exercise this, 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 this limited pool of executive capacity, uh, and they can just bathe like, you know, like a starfish in this data. Um, so that's my that's my counter argument to anything about that. Well, um, actually, that's a point of action. It's agreeing slightly <laughs> here. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, did touch my front touch to you? Uh, Two points for you that. can touch me. <laughs> so so the, the, the point is, um, in most cases, the infographics is about uh, it, is entertainment. And entertainment, yes, it, when it is entertainment, the public wants to be entertained, not uh, uh, um, encumbered. Uh, and, and anyone else, I, 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 when I want to be entertained, I want stupid stuff. You know. uh, <laughs> but uh, in rare cases where it's really important for everyone, that everyone will uh, you know, invest and, and, and care and, and uh, will want to invest and, and work on it, yes. I would like to ask, I don't know. Well, I think everybody loves the fast food, but if you serve them a healthy food and a tasty food, they might also consider eating it, right? So, uh, maybe on, a, on an everyday basis I would go to McDonald's, but sometimes I like to go and eat uh, more fancy food, so... Um, the fact that someone usually prefers uh, the less uh, healthier uh, situation... <laughs> <laughs> doesn't mean that they will always prefer it. So uh, it's true that uh, data porn is uh, um, something that uh, uh, usually uh, the public would usually prefer it, but uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not true that we all, we all need to do it. Good. Anybody? Ooh. Yeah. If, if it's designed. Why did you move? Because. I was convinced, and, and then I, I thought that if it's designed right, so there's not so much of a difference. Nice, nice, nice. I think we'll go on. Oh yeah, one, one, one last statement. Don't touch the microphone. <laughs> we have a dictator here. When elections in major countries can't be predicted, I wouldn't pretend to speak on behalf of the general public. <laughs> wow. A bit of a dark uh, message here. Okay, we'll move to the next statement. Uh, the next statement um, uh, would be, there is no use for storytelling in visual <laughs> analytics. There is no use for storytelling in visual <laughs> analytics. Yeah. <laughs> there is no use for <laughs> analytics in in visual in, it's, wow, sorry, wow, there is no use for storytelling in visual analytics, and the brave <laughs> agreeer is over I here. Agree. Yes. Okay, uh, it's a terminology point. So, a visual analytics is about sense making, and sense making predates storytelling. So, with sense making, you're trying to find the truth, and then you try to tell the story. Okay, so yeah, I, I do agree with that. In, in visual analytics, in communication, there's something else, but that's, that's a later stage. Okay, and. Look at all of these people. <laughs> okay, well, Excuse me. Also, welcome to be to be. Uh, oh, there, there's a feminist statement here. I have to catch that. No, it's a very male brain. It's not very masculine. I meant, but only no, no, it's not. <laughs> but, 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 <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yes. So it's a very male-brained. Uh, agreement and argument and uh, I guess that everybody is uh, more adapted to to having the two spheres of their brain connected so who else feels very firm in their position and, and ready to take a question about the that storyteller. yeah okay so R Robert um, if if this is in, in, in case in Indeed, not the case that there, there, there is a use for storytelling in visual analytics. 
First, what is it? Second, why are we not seeing so much of it? Well, we're not seeing so much of it now because it's just isn't it's only it's only evolving as we're kind of seeing this happen over the last few years. And then the other thing is is it certainly has a part in it because visual analysis without the presentation part is mostly useless because you're not just doing the analysis for its own sake. You want to actually convince people, and we we need to actually figure out how people can actually communicate their results and how we can actually influence decision making at the end. That's, that's the end result. It's not just about numbers, it's about the actual results that you get at the end, which are actions. And that's, that, so we need to have communication as part of that. Uh, so so if, if, you're standing, if you're standing over here, you're basically saying the opposite. So there is a use for storytelling in, in visual <laughs> analytics. Like there, there is an actual important use. Yeah, do that. that jump on the stage. Yeah. Okay. I want to just um, try to rephrase what Mark said. I try, tell me if you agree with this. I'd say that the visual analytics is not the storytelling part, but the story writing part. Oh. Visual analytics is when you figure out what you want to say. What is the story? Then the presentation layer or the presentation part is storytelling. That's, oh, okay. that's, that's, that's what, what I would rather define more or less. <laughs> You don't speak until you have your, your microphone. You can wave, but uh, there's power in my hand, and I want to. I'm I'm distributing. Okay. Yeah, Julia. Right. Don't touch it. Sorry. <laughs> Visualization is defined by a continuum. Uh, on one hand, you have communication. On the other hand, you have analytics. So it's a continuum. You can't really separate. You don't. The, the two extremes doesn't exist as a real, you know, separate part. It's a continuum. So. Even in the analytic, when the analytic balance, when the balance is toward analytics, you have like an element of, of communication. And another thing that I would say is also that even if you extract insight on the analytical side, you have to tell the story to yourself. Nice. Okay. Yeah. The question is the story. There's nothing without storytelling. So the fact that you even decide to do this in an analysis, that you ask a question in order to analyze, is a story. So don't kid yourself. This is the story. Um, there's always agenda. <laughs> Preach. Okay. Um, yes. Last opportunity to sway some people over. Uh, first of all. <laughs> First of all, uh, there's a difference between convince and impartially inform. And I think that the role of visual analytics is, is to impartially inform, not necessarily convince. The, the, okay. And the fact that the human brain, the human mind thinks is stories, for analysts, is a liability. It's a fact, but it's a liability. Okay, so it's something to, 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 to try to work against. Okay, last, okay, somebody. <laughs> Somebody's almost falling off the stage. Your idea is bad and you should feel that. <laughs> Do you want to say why you, why you moved? Because I, I, I couldn't disagree more. I, I think it's, it's a, visual analytics is about, uh, about telling the story and explaining the story. It's about not partially or whatever. It's Okay. Uh, we are going to move on to the next statement, um, and the next statement is you should mostly avoid the use of animation in visualization. You should mostly avoid using animation in visualization. Um, we know very well where this is coming from. This is, um, we know that um, the dance talk was all about animation in visualization, and we know that um, Barbara is not really into that. Um, so let's try to see um, how can we unpack that. Um, so if you think that you should, you should mostly, you should mostly avoid, I think you're in the wrong. So you think you should mostly avoid the use of animation in visualization? Yes, because too much uh, animation in any context is bad. Tasteful means sparing. You need to use it only so much where it actually adds something to the story, not just animation for animation's sake. So good animation doesn't mean a lot of animation. It means using animation in the right places. Um, convinced? No, not really. You, you. You're right, but that's why we should be here. You should use good animations. I mean, you shouldn't avoid using animations. 
should use, but you should use good animations or right animation. Animations are very powerful. That's what you showed uh, you show in your talk. So why not use them in the right way? The problem is the most. I mean, no, 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 no. What are you talking? Yeah. The question is like putting salt on food, right? You put salt on food that needs salt. You don't put salt on food that doesn't need salt. You make sure your salt is good. Same with animations. Make sure they're appropriate for the, whatever message you want to get across. Use them when they're useful. Don't use them when they are. Okay, two uh, people agree with each other too much in this panel. Uh, everybody wants. Yeah. You, you made the wrong. You asked the wrong question. Uh, attack the, the, the moderator. <laughs> that, that's that's low. Come, come to the forward. There is the most clear that is a problem. This is not an extreme statement. You have you should absolutely or completely, but mostly is uh, something in between. So it's not an extreme statement. Okay. So 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 I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm you're attacking me from being ambiguous now. Exactly. Okay. So let's move on to the next statement. Um, okay. Uh, let's do. Um, a visualization should always, that's better, right? Yeah. The, a visualization should always strive for comprehension as soon as possible. A visualization should always strive for comprehension as soon as possible. So, uh, I'll, I'll go to Enrico because this is coming from uh, his idea. And Enrico is going, is standing, so decide where, where you, so you completely disagree. So you completely agree. So you completely, as soon as possible. So you should decide where you stand, as soon as possible. Um, I'll repeat the statement. A visualization should always strive for comprehension as soon as possible. If you stand over here, it means that a, should, a visualization should never strive for comprehension as soon as possible. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, why, why do you stand where you stand? Communication is not always. Okay. Argue against my uh, assumption. <laughs> well, there are... Don't touch the mic. <laughs> That's the first time. <laughs> Uh, no, I think there are cases where you do, it's, it makes sense to spend time learning uh, if learning leads to uh, advantages, otherwise it doesn't make sense. So I think there are cases where you do need time to learn how to use a visualization, especially an interactive visualization system, and learning is important because it leads to a situation where you can do things that otherwise it wouldn't be possible to do. And we shouldn't expect people to not learn, because learning is very important. So if you use Photoshop to edit your in some images, you have to learn how to use Photoshop. So I don't understand why you shouldn't spend time learning a visualization tool. So, um, so Enrico is arguing for, for learning and some time uh, invested in learning as a part of the cognition. Um, and basically, Adam, which is standing all the way over there, thinks you should understand it as soon as possible. <laughs> Don't even think about it. Well, I think every visualization should strive to be understandable as soon as possible. There's always a trade-off. Um, you, you can't always do that, but you should always strive for it. I don't think, I don't, can't see any uh, reason for striving not to be understandable as soon as possible. You always want to be understandable. Sometimes you have to trade off, you know, sometimes it's too complicated and you can't achieve that, but you always strive for it. I don't see any reason to put any, uh, anything in a reservation that makes it un not un be well, being able to be understandable uh, or some obstacle to make it more obscure, right? So you want it to be understandable. Anybody wants to argue against that specific point? Um, so uh, I, think, I think it's a matter of, of, of context, as in what is it that I'm striving to communicate? For like, is, is it good to be comprehensible as soon as possible? Yes, but the question is what part of the thing that I'm trying to communicate? If I'm trying to communicate something complex, then the threshold for people understanding the whole idea 
might be shorter if I don't have like a waypoint to first explain fully only part of the idea. Maybe I need to provide the whole context and it takes a little bit longer. I'm willing to make that time trade-off so that they have a shorter route to the full picture. Okay, anybody want, wants to add to that? Uh, come to the front. So, um, animations don't, I mean, visualizations don't strive. Designers strive. <laughs> and sometimes things are clear and then you should, and you're communicating communicating to an audience and you want it clear if I'm trying to explain physics or chemistry and the facts are known, but other times things aren't clear. If I'm designing a new building, I don't want closure too quickly. That's why architects don't like CAD-CAM programs, they like sketches. So again, just about everything depends on the audience, on the purpose, <laughs> on the information. It's hard to be on a continuum, right? Uh, Yes, I, I think that the question is wrong again, because as soon as possible, <laughs> what does it mean? As soon as possible does not mean right away. This is a misunderstanding. And uh, I think it was Einstein who said that a model should be as simple as possible, but no simpler, right? An explanation should be as simple as possible, but no simpler. But I think that's actually an important goal also. I think there, it should be, it should be as, you should be, it should be designed to be understandable as quickly as possible, but that doesn't mean it has to be in an instant. So I think that that needs to be qualified and we need to think about trade-offs of it. So it's not just about instant, it's about what, how much time do you, are you willing to invest? And that's the whole question of as soon as possible, what does that mean? So it's hard to, make, to have a clear opinion on this statement because it's ambiguous. I think I have the key to make this ambiguation here that is dis distinguished between the fact that we want to avoid complication we don't uh, want to avoid complexity and that means that a tool and then we should be clear about what we mean when we talk about tool because for me a tool is even the graphic device the primitive form of the graphic device is a tool and you know someone else can think that the tool is like an interface so we should be clear i think about about that point but the main point is there's no problem with complexity. We don't want to tri trivialize the whole thing, but we don't want complications. So I think we should remove from the equation everything that is too complicated, or uh, I mean everything that can be immediately perceivable. So it, as, as, as long as we have done that, then we can face complexity, removing from the equation complication. Anybody wants to add something to that? Yeah. Complications uh, you should definitely remove, but from the visualization, and not from the problem. Exactly. Exactly. Look. <laughs> 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 complexity. Uh, complexity. Uh, complication in the contents. Complexity <laughs> is the, the the problem that is complex. Complication is what is an obstacle that you can remove in order to make. The, the, the complexity emerging and getting as, as much inside as you can from the complexity. Yes, so you can, you, every model is a, is a simplification, so it's a simplification, it's never true, it never captures the true complexity and the true uh, uh, problem space, but it, at least your solution should reflect the complexity of the design space. Yeah, I, I agree, I stay in the middle because there is a problem with definitions. <laughs> um, yeah, just so you know. Now, the question is never wrong. The, the, mis, the, the, the interpretation of the question can be argued, which is what we're having here. Yes. Um, any, anybody? You know what? Let's move on. Um, okay. Can you ask if a chart should always, have, should always be comprehensible? Okay, yeah, let's do that. Um, I, I don't ask, I say. A chart should always be comprehensible. A chart should always be comprehensible. Agree is there. Disagree is there. Always is in the statement. Yeah. Okay. And now it's my fault. It was his. Okay, a, a chart. A chart should always 
be comprehensible. That is the statement. Deal with it and stop attacking the moderator. Even though I have the microphone and I can continue speaking and not letting you speak at all. So, um, you're standing over there, and, which means a chart should, should not always be com uh, comprehensible, right? Should never. Yeah. Or should never. No, never. No, well, well that, that, that's, a, that's a rhetorical, that's a rhetorical assignment. No, a chart, a chart should not always be comprehensible. That's what you're arguing for. No, what I what I am arguing for is that the statement was a chart should always be comprehensible, and I have a, a, a specific counterexample that I use all the time, and that's when I put charts and presentations. I often don't explain the chart all the way because I want to leave the people with this image and have them grapple with the idea while they wait for me to explain it because it keeps their attention on me as a speaker. Um, so that's one state, and if I have one state, then the absolute can't hold true. So that's why I disagree. But other than that case, I think that yes. Well, this case, yeah. Okay, and anybody want, what, what wants to... Okay. Um, the chart should always be comprehensible, but the model behind it is not always comprehensible. The model can be complicated. The model can be uh, using technical terms that are not, uh, uh, that the audience doesn't know them. So the chart will never be comprehensible by someone who can't comprehend the model behind it. So, uh, and if you want to simplify the, simplify the model, then you're, uh, you're changing the problem. So, uh, no, the chart can't always be comprehensible. Um, yeah, think about it. Anybody wants to argue against that? So, uh, or rather, for that, the chart should always be comprehensible. And Enrico uh, proposed it, and apparently he thinks it should always be comprehensible. So let's hear it from the man. So <laughs> why do you use a chart otherwise? Yeah. Yeah. I, I say almost always. I say almost always just because of the data out. Some may call it fetish or porn, but I do see uh, a possibility for art that is based on data, and the, in that case, you don't always need comprehensive. It's a chart. It's not a chart. Yeah. No. A chart is used there as a graph, not a table. I guess, yeah. But I, I've seen chart, charts or graphs that were incomprehensible to me, at least at first glance and to which I had a aesthetic, very positive aesthetic reaction. Okay, so some, some will call it fetish, uh, <coughs> fetish visualizations, but I see a place for them. Just yeah. like, well, I don't eat yeah. McDonald's, but I do junk food for other sorts. Okay, so as you can see, people from the audience can join the conversation. So I <laughs> encourage so you to come, to come <laughs> uh, join us. Um, yes. Uh, Another reason, we saw a lot of uh, bad examples on, uh, uh, on the uh, presentations today and without them we wouldn't have bad examples, so we need some charts to be uncomprehensible so we can show, them, show what not to do. <laughs> there, there, there are no bad examples. Right? About being comprehensible is, for instance, a complex scatter plot, you know, plotting different dimension of data and not allowing you to draw any conclusion. Is that a comprehensible chart or not? A chart that is not comprehensible is one that you don't know how to read. Well, again, again, we have a problem of definitions. Yeah. <laughs> you can never really know if your audience or user comprehended the chart the way you wanted. So, If you want to join the conversation, go on the stage. and and. Position, position yourself. Don't touch the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. So you are standing on that thing. You're on. Well, following the uh, counterexample, I think it was shows, right? Um, the one counterexample is one person in the audience that doesn't understand what I intended in my chart. And that would be it. But th that's it, I think. So, so you're basically arguing that in some cases, some people don't comprehend the chart, and others do. Uh, would that make it uncomprehensible and therefore um, unusable? You were using superlatives. You were using superlatives, and so it's very easy to um, to, to refute them. Yes, thank you. The statement was not what is the resulting you know effect, but the the, the, the statement was about what it should be, and it should be comprehensible. That's not say, to say that, that everybody will understand it, but it, it certainly it still should be comprehensible. That there's no 
But there's not that there's no 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 contradiction here. <laughs> what you see should be comprehensible. That was a part of the statement. Yeah. Sorry. That, that means that the weakest uh, a member of your audience determines the complexity of the charts that you can create. So that means that you need to create the simplest and less expressive uh, chart because that's what everybody is going to understand. Okay. Uh, 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 just a completely different counterexample. Uh, that's false positives. Sometimes the data is a mess. There's nothing there. It's just completely noise and nothing there. And in this case, if a visualization erroneously creates a sense, it is comprehensible, but just wrong. It creates comprehension when there is none there. It's a rare case, but it happens. In this case, the visualization should be as messy and as noisy as the data. Okay. That's yeah. not chart comprehension. Comprehension is whether you know how to read it or not. Uh, so yeah. whether then this leads to wrong conclusions or not, this is not comprehension. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Comprehension, I think that you should strive for comprehension, right? You should strive for people's understanding. So it should be, the word you said is important. You should strive uh, towards uh, people understanding your charts. That, or, that was part of the previous uh, comment? The strive. That's a new addition. We didn't have that before. <laughs> Okay, I think we're going to move on. Maybe we'll do another more and then... Uh, okay, so... Um, <laughs> I'm not speaking before I see you live. Um, this, the next statement is, Worry not, time would heal the plague of deceptive visualization. So th 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 this is based on <laughs> Enrico's answer. Worry not, time would heal the plague of deceptive visualization. <laughs> okay, so I'll go to Enrico first because it's based on uh, on his talk. Time won't heal it, but it's going to improve. Okay, so you you're walking a bit further here. Okay, so so Enrico is arguing that it would get better over time. Maybe not heal, but better. Better in the sense that less people will produce them, or more people will understand, will be able to detect them. Are you asking me a question? I don't answer questions here. <laughs> so, both. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so Mark is actually like no, the true believer. I, I'm thinking astronomical terms. You know, the sun will go out, and you know that humanity will go extinct. And yes, uh, but 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 but, that, <laughs> but, but uh, some would argue. I, 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 some would argue that would be the result of of of, of, of bad visualization, right? I, I think you're giving too much credit to bad visualization, so there, there are better reasons. But. Cool. Yes. Just a small comment before I give my full answer. Um, if uh, the humanity is extinct, but uh, or if, if a bad, if it, bad visualization exists, but no one is there to uh, be deceived by it, <laughs> is, it the, the, is it still bad? So I think even after you know the universe uh, implodes, the bad visualization still uh, will uh, remain. But uh, I, to, on, on a more serious note, I think that uh, cognitive uh, uh, biases uh, will will not improve at the rate that uh, um, people wanting to take advantage of, of these biases. Uh, will improve because evolution evolution goes very slowly, uh, at least today. And uh, people wanting to uh, deceive and wanting to uh, take advantage of these uh, cognitive biases are plenty, and they are paid very, uh, very highly. So, <laughs> so yes, I think uh, uh, it will not get better. It will only, only get worse because visualizations are such a powerful tool, and uh, the more people uh, know to read them the more incentive there is to uh, um, lie to these people, so... Pretty dark. I, I think the, the concept that there is a truth, even in analysis and visualization, is, is false, because there really is no truth, so... Deceiving, not deceiving, I, I, I don't know if... Yes, I think... <laughs> I mean, I mean, deceiving in what way? We, as I said before, we always have agendas, and, and there's agenda in anything. So, so deceiving for one person can be a very, very effective tool for another person. So, 
Um, no, no. I, I, we can ask two people if they think that they're being deceived or not by the same, and they would not think they would not think that. I mean, some people really, really think that there's an, an honest, uh, honest argument. So that's really not something that you can measure. Okay. The, also, yeah. the intent is not. So if we look at deceptive language, there's no evidence that our politicians lie less now <laughs> than earlier. So I see no reason for improvement on visualizations. <laughs> okay, strong uh, political argument. Um, okay, you uh, you guys have moved a bit. Um, and okay, yes, Julio. That's why we need to go beyond fetish visualization. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Um, any last remarks? I think, I think we're going to wrap this as uh, we're in full energy. So any last remarks on this statement or others? Uh, thank you very much for the organization of the conference. Yeah. Thank you.